Bubble is a good product, but in 2023, I think it's become a bit overrated. I would hesitate to use Bubble in all but a few cases. Here's why. Like I said, the Bubble App Builder and ecosystem is a good product. But Bubble as a brand has become iconic. You think no code app builder, you think Bubble. I've said it before, being first is better than being the best. Bubble was the first. Is it still the best? Speaking as an app developer, there are other no code platforms as comprehensive as Bubble. At least there's nothing you can build on Bubble in 2023 that you can only build on Bubble. Bubble was founded in 2012. Today, it's still a leading platform. But when you consider its advantages versus its disadvantages, I think Bubble controls a large portion of the no-code market just because the brand has become so big. That's never good for end users. And from there are two reasons why I wouldn't be comfortable with using Bubble. Primary reason, vendor lock-in. When you build an app on Bubble, you don't own the code base. Bubble does. I can see a new founder being like, meh, that's not a big deal. Then they learn the hard way. It's a big deal. They may not have experience working with a profitable business idea. They're just throwing everything at the wall and see what sticks. When something sticks and you have something to lose, then you're not so chill. So there's two sides of building a no-code SaaS here. A site with no profitable ideas and a site with a profitable idea. To me, so long as you're still on this site, go ahead and use Bubble. Pay for their startup plans. Could you do better? Who cares? You can build most prototypes fast and that's often all that matters. My issue is that Bubble wants you to stay with them even on this site. You see it in their wordings, marketings, and how articles about seven-figure SaaS using Bubble. It's great for Bubble. If your SaaS is super active, you use more Bubble resources and pay them more. And to be fair, it looks like you can run a seven-figure business on Bubble. Think better legal and flexible. But they cannot deny they are depending a whole lot on Bubble. And Bubble isn't your friend. It's a huge business that owes a financial responsibility to its shareholders. AKA, its job is to make them lots of money, even if it comes at your expense. Bubble changed the pricing recently, and threats like this are so common, I hardly notice now. But this one had a response that made me feel a mixture of sadness, frustrations, and all kinds of it basically made me go through the seven stages of grief in five seconds. Never get attached to your tools. If there's a better alternative, use it. Bubble has shown that they're not attached to you at all, and I don't blame them. Someone gave an answer I think all new founders should hear. Strong words, but there's truth in it. Why do people still tolerate when they lock in in 2023? You don't have to. There are other no-code app builders that let you build complex apps and export source code. Reweb, Draftbit, ShareTribe, Flutterflow, just to name a few. So they give you the strength of Bubble without its biggest drawback. Why aren't they more popular? It could be that they or it could be they went first and don't have anywhere near the marketing budget of Bubble. Yeah, so that's my worry when it comes to Bubble. And then there's a more general secondary reason. Secondary reason, the limitations of no code. No code is a great way for non tech founders to build MVPs. I would say it's arguably the most time and cost effective way, but it's an MVP. When your SaaS or even website needs to grow and scale, your no code app builder might be enough. It might not. Probably not, actually. Now, wouldn't it be nice to have the option to stay on your no code platform or take your app and find a new home? The flexibility to make decisions without being limited by the tools you use? To me, that's not even nice. It's non negotiable. And Bubble's just not built to offer that level of flexibility, which is fine, I guess, as long as it's good enough. But for every better legal or flexible that runs their million dollar SaaS on no code, you get many more founders that need to transition out of no code. Saying all that, I'll still recommend Bubble. If a non-tech founder asks me, Hey, can I use Bubble? I'll say, yes. If you aren't 100% sure what you need, then Bubble is a safe option to build an MVP fast. And you can iterate beyond MVP too. But it's still no code at the end of the day, so be prepared to rebuild everything. If someone asks me if Bubble is the best and would I personally use it for a business that I want to run long term, I'd say no. Whatever capability it offers is just not worth the risk of vendor lock in. If I was going to go no code to build a prototype or MVP, there are options without vendor lock in. Again, WeWeb, Dropbit, ShareTribe, 
Flutterflow. So why would I use Bubble? If you're already past MVP and working on a validated app idea, chances are you're going to need functions that need custom coding anyways. That's where nerds like me come in. So I just can't think of any situation where I'll be like, yes, Bubble is the best tool for this. Not anymore, but you can do it. Just know that if one day, you get hit with a breaking change you can't fix because of when the lock-in, you have one person to blame. As you can tell, I'm not the biggest fan of Bubble. I don't have anything against Bubble, I just really can't stand when the lock-in. Bubble today isn't unmatched. As the Reddit comment said, it's probably just the loudest in the room. Excuse me, nothing, nothing is, louder is louder than, than even change. change. There are alternatives to a Bubble that let you build complex and comprehensive apps. Here's a video where I go over three bubble alternatives based on three use cases. One of them, WeWeb, I'm a big fan of. Please subscribe, give this video a like, tell me in the comments, would you build a seven-figure SaaS product on bubble if you knew its potential from the start? Cheers guys.